All right, one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorites before I even did the ratings and smashed and crunched all the numbers together. Jerry and Grant, uh, point guard for Notre Dame. He can actually play a couple positions. He can. He really finishes well going to the basket. I, I really. That's one of the things that really jumped out at me. Over seventy percent of field goal percentage at the rim. Uh, for a guard, that's impressive for sure. Uh, three point percentage, three point shooting can get a little bit better, about 32, 33 percent. So he definitely can improve there as well as with the two point jump shot. But where he also shines is in handling the basketball. 3.1 assist to turnover ratio, um, 6.7 assist. He locks down on defense. This dude can play, and this is the reason why, and the numbers back it up. This is the reason why he's a 76. I mean, the stats back him up, being that in terms of being efficient as well as, um, you know, being efficient offensively as well as playing good defense. I gave him 12 badges, limitless range. You've seen some of the shots he knocks down, just pulling up from wherever. You don't know why I said that. Microwave, shot creator, dimer, killer crossover, pet move size up, interceptor, perimeter lockdown defender, pickpocket, alpha dog, closer, and floor general. Mad respect for Jerry and Grant's game. I personally think that he should be uh, a top 10 pick. I don't know if they're going to do it, but I think he should be a top 10 pick. The only point guard, uh, unless you call D'Angelo Russell a point guard, but the only point guard I would say that should probably definitely be picked ahead of him is Emmanuel Mugier. Side of that, Jerry and Grant is my guy. Also, you know, a lot of people don't know he's a nephew of Horace Grant and the son of Harvey Grant. Uh, I say a lot of people because I said that to somebody a couple of days ago and they were like, I didn't know that. And I'm like, I don't know why you didn't, but maybe you didn't. Uh, not a bad, horrible render, I don't think. Pretty decent. 6'5", 204. Great size for the point guard. And let's look at the signature stuff. That elite, elite dribble pull up. Cross. Behind the back. That spin. That has he. The signature quick, a little quick, a little quick. Jamal Crawford, yes, I thought that was definitely the best match for the layup for him. Uh, he's not a freak athlete, so he's going to get some basic slam stuff there. But he can put it down a little bit. And a little bit more. Jerry Grant immediately jumps up there. He's tied for, if you're wondering, him and Jalil Okafor are tied for the second highest rated prospect so far. Number one is still... Emmanuel Mugier. Kelly Oubre Jr. A lot of, lot of, or a whole bunch of attention for him when he, you know, came out. But I'm going to be honest. I really think he should have gone back to school. I do. Um, I gave him a 68. He's known uh, for his ability to score on the wing. He's a very good athlete and a very smooth jump shot. But I just noticed a lot of inconsistency from him as a freshman and I thought that he probably needed to give himself an opportunity to have a you know a consistent season in college before trying to make that jump but nonetheless that money that money that money that money so uh, he got six badges gave him the corner specials the dead eyes step back freeze and the lob city finisher as well as transition and finisher and sprite poster ride. can get up now they don't have his hair we had the kind of mohawk high top fade kind of a thing. So had to go with this. I think I did a pretty good job creating him. It's the second time I did it. So I had to go back in and, you know, whatever. But let's look at the signature stuff for him. That smooth left-handed jump shot. Made him up the Kyrie Irving base, the Michael Jordan release on the left hand. So that's really different. James Harden free throws. Elite pull up. But, yeah, I mean, if you look at, just look at what, I mean, uh, Kelly Oubre had games late in the season. He was getting four and five and six and seven points and that sort of thing. Just not making the type of impact that you would necessarily have expected. Um, but he's getting, he's going in the draft either way. And so you take a look at some of these slams he's gotten. He has here. i gotten. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Some of the slams he has. Tomahawks. All with the left hand with the windmill. 
windmill reverse. Oh yeah, yeah. We we hooked them up on the athletic side. We hooked them up. But that's it with the sixty eight. I know some Jayhawk fans are throwing stuff at their phone or whatever. But that's what we got. This is Michael Frazier the second who my render ended up looking a lot like uh, Tyreek Evans. Gave him seven badges, the corner specialist, limitless range, microwave, volume shooter, expressive, spark plug, and swagger. Uh, he's a shooter. He's a shooter. Uh, not a great athlete, but he can definitely shoot the three a little bit. Um, more of a, um, you know, just, I, I wouldn't, I shouldn't say, it, his three-point shooting, if you look at the percentages, is really not, it doesn't blow you away. You don't get blown away at all by the percentages. But he makes big shots. If you you know if you kind of follow Florida Gator uh, basketball, you know he makes big shots. But he did shoot 38% from three, so which is obviously above average. He's an 87% free throw shooter. He averaged 12 points a game. Uh, shot 48% from uh, I mean 48% from two point range. 41.7 overall. So, um, but his he, he's not a great athlete. Not a you know above the rim kind of explosive kind of a guy. That's the reason why he's not, um, you see the, the, the Tyreek Evans thing I'm talking about. That's the reason why he's not considered one of the top shooting guard prospects. He's looking, to, looks, looks like he's going to go to mid to late second round. So, um, yeah, but definitely in the draft for sure. And I like his, I like his shooting form, definitely. Uh, so I tried to make that as close as possible. A lot of a lot of my rookies, especially these guys in the second round, which is you know you gotta think about it. This is what you're seeing. Some of them in the first round, like I mean Kelly Oubre isn't gonna be in the first round for sure, more than likely. I'm I'm positive, and I gave him a 68. But you know Michael Frazier is obviously not on his level um, as a prospect, but there he is. So you're seeing a lot of guys in the 60s, but there will be the 70s guys. I don't know. As of right now, still Emmanuel Mugier is the highest rated rookie I've done I've I've created so we'll see what happens but this is Michael Frazier the second